Grand opening, grand closing. Welcome, my friends, my family, my fellow gamers. Your only friend is YouTube Streets Porter Rock 77, hitting you up on this beautiful weekend with another video. I hope you guys are doing good, but I want to go straight to the point. We are witnessing the signs of the end of the Xbox fanboy. Their numbers is up. It's already written on the wall. It's happening. They're going to be the next Sega, right? In terms of that, right? We're already, see I'm already seeing signs, little signs that, yes, Microsoft will be start putting games on Nintendo PlayStation, right? And it's because I already seen this movie play out with them when they started their journey to put games day and date on PC. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I noticed seeing this movie is there's certain little indicators that I paid attention to and it's happening again, right? Indicators like little rumors and journalists going out there. Oh, I heard this. I heard that. I heard this, right? That's just one indicator. Now, that indicator by itself doesn't mean nothing, right? Because it could just be talk. It could just be, what's your source? Trust me, bro. Got it. But the one big indicator, right, which is the next step, is how the bigger journalists or content creators, I'm talking like the big ones, the ones that actually go on stage, on the Microsoft showcase or at Gamescom, you know, the people Microsoft invite to host shows and, you know, things like that. Those big guys, right? Because you have, you know, Microsoft, Xbox, they, they coordinate, you know, they include, they talk to a lot of content creators of various sizes, you know, like Colt Eastwood and stuff, Iron Lords podcast, or, you know, whoever, you know, they have, you know, their grassroots you know, guys like that. But then you got the content creators that they invite on stage to speak on their behalf on game shows. They directly interview, you know, Phil Spencer on the big screen and all that stuff. Those Xbox content creators, right? And when you start seeing them kind of pitch points and views that align with Microsoft goal, that's when you know Microsoft has that going. What I mean by that is when Microsoft started, when the rumors of Microsoft putting games day and date on PC, you saw these guys like, listen, it's Windows. It's Microsoft operating system. There's nothing wrong putting Xbox games on PC. It's it's Windows. It's all Windows based. Nothing's going to nothing, nothing's gonna be taken away from you, right? Nothing's going to be taken away from you and all that stuff, right? It's all, you know, it's all gravy. Xbox community disagreed. A lot of them did not like it. A lot of them were afraid of what would happen to the Xbox console. But the, once you started getting the big content creators sending the same message, prepping the fan base, telling them it's okay, giving scenarios of how not only this doesn't hurt the Xbox, but it actually will make Xbox better because they can fund games. They can, you know, expand the audience. It's so you'll get you'll get more out of it and nothing will be taken away from you. That's what they were doing. And we learned, we learned, right? We learned that Microsoft does provide information to content creators and journalists to prep them to help them you know, spread their message of what they're going to do and stuff like that to already get the feel. Well, it's happening again, right? We got Paris here. We seen him on the Microsoft stage. We seen him get invited on Gamescom representing Microsoft in terms of Xbox, talking about Xbox. We seen him directly interview Phil Spencer. We seen him on the Xcast, stuff like that. He's one of the big ones for Xbox, you know, always talking. And then I seen others already talking and it's beginning. They're prepping the audience. They're trying to convince the audience. How did this hurt you? I want you to listen to this. What? Maybe we should expand it and put it on more platforms. Maybe we do bring it to the switch. Maybe we do bring it to PlayStation, right? It's not 
the craziest thing in the world to say that a Microsoft game is on a PlayStation platform because Minecraft lives there and, and the various iterations of Minecraft already live there. Same as Nintendo. So here's a multiplayer game where you want to get as many people as you possibly can playing that game. Chase more than that. They want PlayStation guy. They want the most angriest Sony person on social media that just detests Xbox. They want to give them a reason to invest in the Xbox ecosystem. And how do you do that with exclusive titles? You will not see these games on PlayStation. That, that's all I'm saying. So you know what? Maybe we should expand it and put it on more platforms. Maybe we do bring it to the Switch. Maybe we do bring it to PlayStation, right? It's not the craziest thing in the world to say. So as you noticed, on Xcast, he's actually talking about, you know, this recent Xcast. It's not crazy. It's not going to harm the community, whatever. You see him, it's not a crazy idea. But you saw a different tune in 2020, completely different tune. So what changed from 2020 to 2024? Microsoft guidance. He knows. And he's helping them along. Oh, he knows. Microsoft had a conversation with him. And they're prepping the stage. It's happening. Now, all of a sudden, everything is peachy key when it comes to, um, you know, bringing these games. Hey, multiplayer, you want the big audience, right? This is happening. There's, there's nothing we can do about it. I mean, there's nothing no one could do. It's done. It's going over. The main fight is going to come from the hardcore Xbox fans and Xbox fanboys. And your number's up, okay? Primarily because they feel owed something. Listen to this here. Then suddenly it'll be, oh, it's on PlayStation 2. Because this is what they do. And I'm just sick of it. I don't even want to hear this. Like, mm -hmm. if Phil is listening, just stop. Enough. We yeah. we went through the worst generation with Xbox One, stayed loyal to your platform. This is our freaking generation where you right. finally have the games, you finally have a platform, and we get to enjoy it, and then you just say, well, the first exclusive you got, new IP, we're going to take that and not make it exclusive. Why? Yeah. What is the point? Why do this? Oh, we want to expose it for the next... No, I don't care. I don't even want to hear any more excuses. All right. Stop running into the rake every freaking time. You get good news, good news, and then thump. Why? Just yeah. stop. And then they if have to reset, true, right? Then they have to reset yeah, back wait, to gaining yeah, the trust why? of the people. And then, yeah, and then we're no. back to like months and months of wait for the next good thing. We now have to deal with the red fall again. 2022, no games. Like, come on. It, it just like, stop. We finally get a year where we're like, dude, we're going to get all these games. Oh, but we don't know if they're going to be exclusive anymore. Like, it just, just stop. Seriously. Because then, you know, it's going to be every game that isn't massive. Is it going to be exclusive? I put yes, Blade yeah, behind. Was, uh, yeah. Can you guarantee mm -hmm. that's going to be exclusive? Because I can't guarantee it's going to be exclusive. Like, th this just should not be a question mark. You came out and said when you bought Bethesda, this is about great exclusive games coming to platforms where Game Pass exists. Is Game Pass on Nintendo? Have you announced that? I haven't seen any announcement. So why the heck am I seeing that this game is... I I'm just sick of it. You tell me Mario Mario Wonder comes to Xbox, fine, you can get, put this game there. Until then, right. shut up. I'm just I just don't even want to hear it anymore. Right. Like th this is a business where there are platforms that have exclusives. If you want to be in that business, then be in that business. You need to have your exclusives. I need to know that when you have first party freaking studios, they're making games for my platform. So, you can see he's very frustrated. They're all frustrated. And I don't think they understand that Phil doesn't need to tell you a goddamn thing. You don't pay him. He's not owed to you. If he loses you as a fan, you are a drop. You are a, a raindrop in the ocean. Nothing lost from losing you.
Let me let me remind you guys who the hell Microsoft really is. Because I don't think you guys really know who Microsoft really is. Right? Microsoft had Mixer. Their own streaming service so you can, you know, be a game streamer, all this stuff. They even gave contracts out to some of the biggest streamers out there to exclusively stream on Mixer. Shroud, Ninja, like baseball player, NBA level type contracts. Like $54 million for five year streaming. We're talking huge money. Like, holy cow. Like, this is NBA, you know, sports level contracts type stuff. So Microsoft was throwing in the money. They were all in on Mixer until they realized they were done with Mixer. And when did they decide to be done with Mixer? In the middle of the COVID pandemic, the summer, right? Dead stop in the middle where businesses have shut down. People are having, you know, can't get jobs or their businesses closed and they were out of work. They got laid off. Well, a few had a decent living, they were getting some money, being streamers on Mixer. And they were not even given a heads up by Microsoft to say, hey, we're shutting down Mixer in about a month. You might want to start transitioning your audience from Mixer over to another platform before that. Nope. Microsoft went, shut it down and gave a press release saying, oh, thank you for the support, blah, 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 da, 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 da. We recommend you go to Facebook Gaming and everything's going to be great. Like that. Mm. You wake up one morning, you can't stream. You can't tell your audience that's on your mixer that you're merging over. Because you just found out it's done. And you're like, in the middle of a pandemic, a lot of businesses shut down, very challenging to get work. The one thing that maybe give you some type of change in your pocket, you know, not you're not filthy rich, but something, something, right? You made a thousand here a month, two thousand here a month, whatever you do, it helped out a little bit, right? I guess I didn't give a damn, and I'm not saying they should have given a damn. Mixer wasn't working, so they shut it down. They're not gonna keep it running just because of COVID. You need to find a different way to make money. It's not their problem. Just like how this situation is not their problem. You don't like it. You need to be told. You ain't going to be told nothing. Things are going to be told their way on their time. And that's it. They're doing it. Whether you like it or not, doesn't matter. The problem is these guys, and you heard them from his own voice, from his own voice. They went through the worst gen, but they were loyal. Why the hell would you be loyal for a product that you now admit was terrible. It doesn't make sense. And the funny part is, in gaming, if a product's terrible, you could just not play it. And then when they get better later on, you can get it later on. Like, there's no rule of when to jump on and off the product. I know people like used to, you know, use terms like, you know, what you, uh, switch teams or jump the fence. Or flip flop, none of that. Those, those old terms are real in gaming. If a, if a brand is good, it's good. If a brand is bad, it's whatever. For example, the Switch, I'm not really into it. I'm not really into the Switch at all. You know, don't like the fact that it's really extremely weak. Whatever, it looks terrible on the TV for me, for my taste. It's just, it's just, it's just not an appealing product. But with the Switch 2, if they improve on the hardware. Much better performance, much better graphics. If some of the games are backwards compatible and they enhance it, I will go back to play it. That's it. And if people go, oh, you flip-flopping. Like, ah, I don't care what the opinions of people. I like what I like. I don't like what I don't like. You appeal to me. I'm the consumer. I am the customer. The product needs to appeal to me. That's how everybody should look at stuff. There is no loyalty or just stick with it just because you stick with it. If a product has a bad streak and it's terrible... Then go away. Come back when it's better. But these guys feel they owed something because they're out there championing. They're out there defending. They're out there doing all this stuff. And they created a persona strictly based on this parameter. And it's about to go away. Because if Microsoft puts all these games on PlayStation and PS5, you're going to champion a publisher? Like, do we have EA fanboys, Ubisoft fanboys, Capcom fanboys in that sense? 
Right now, the threat is really you're taking away the identity. It's so bad that even Tim Dog recognizes this. He says, I agree. Xbox is all over the place with this. But if it's everything, it's a ghost town. In reality, they are probably actively working on a sequel. And this is that idea is a way of getting the game more eyes, more players for more success for the future. That's fine. But you have to communicate this to fans. Otherwise, you risk once again a PR nightmare. Xbox is at the point where only they can mess this up. And yes, here we are. I'll tell you this. If games like Starfield go to PS5, even I will haul ass out of here. I think as tone deaf as Xbox seems, it can be at times. I know they know they can't do that. You know? Here's the reality. Think of think of think of this from Microsoft's perspective. They've been around since 2001. It's not like they just started. I know it feels like the storm, but they didn't. They've been in this game since 2001 when they launched the Xbox, right? It, it's 20, it's, we just finished 2023. Xbox has completed 22 years of existence. And there is still dozens, I mean countless regions, where PlayStation and Nintendo are easily embedded, easily penetrated the markets, easily, all over. Household names in regions around the world. And Xbox doesn't even have a toenail in the door. Like nothing. As if they never existed for the last 22 years. Like literally nothing. It's almost as if they starting over. They now purchased Activision Blizzard, $69 billion. They purchased Bethesda, another six billion, right? Over seventy billion dollars. They already coughed up, out of pocket. Which you think is the next step for advancement and to make money for Xbox? A. That seventy billion dollars is geared towards, particularly a console, because that's the argument, really. Let's be honest. Exclusive is not for the platform, the ecosystem. Because PC is his own thing, phones is his own thing, PlayStation, Nintendo is not intruding or competing in the PC space or the phone space or none of that stuff. It's really the console space. You can't say the entire ecosystem because PC gamers aren't even Xbox gamers. They are PC gamers that play an Xbox game. How? Because when a PC gamer wants to play Jedi or Hogwarts, you know, or something, they're not going to Xbox to do that. They're going to Steam, a completely different storefront, which has no relation to Xbox. Microsoft makes no money off of Steam sales unless it's their own games, right? So all these third-party games, NBA 2K, whatever, whatever, Microsoft has no play in PC unless you directly buy it on the Microsoft Store. So in reality, PC gamers are really Steam gamers because they love that, right? Microsoft has no play. Fortnite players, one of the biggest games in the world. That's Epic Game Store exclusive. Microsoft has no play on that. The only Fortnite players that Microsoft has a foothold is on their own console. If you play Fortnite on Xbox console, Microsoft gets a cut, all right? So all this exclusive stuff is pertaining to the console, nothing else. That's really where it comes down to it. So now again, two options. Option A, focus on the console, I mean, obviously, they're going to still do their PC and all that stuff, but put some effort on the console to go to the market and to start getting your foot in these regions where PlayStation and Nintendo are dominant in. And simply having the games is not enough. You're going to have to invest in the advertising. You're going to have to invest in the localizations. You're really going to have to get the message out to get people to say, look at us, look at us, look at us. Hello, hello, hello. And you're hoping this investment, hoping that this investment will pay off, that you can gain some market share, at least market share significant enough to make it worth it on all this extra investment. On top of the 70 plus billion you already spent, now all the marketing and all this strategy you're doing, all that, the gains that you get made it worth it. That's option A. Or you can go... Option B,
invest in multi-platform development, right? To which you already have experience with your studios, they especially the ones you just bought. Activision has great experience in multi-platform development. Bethesda has great experience in multi-platform development. How to manage that? You just invest in that so you could get the rest of your studios on par to what Activision and Bethesda is capable of doing. You also already bought some studios that have experience in multi-platform development because Ninja Theory has already has experience. You know, um, who's all the studio? Obsidian. They already have sort of experience in multi-platform development. They, they're already used to it. So you don't really have to teach them much. All you have to do is just fund them and get them the equipment. Just fund the process. The ones that don't are the ones like 343. While individually, you might have individual people that worked on PlayStation games if they work for another developer, another studio, another publisher. But as a team, 343, they never made a PlayStation game as a team. You know, same thing with Coalition. So they're going to have to learn those ropes. But all those people can definitely use the experience from all the Activision developers, all the Bethesda developers. And all Microsoft's got to do is just invest the money for better tools and platform development. And then you instantly got access to literally 200 plus million gamers like that. And all you did was just invest in platform tools and development. And you instantly get access to over 200 million gamers. Instantly to all of it because PlayStation Nintendo did the work. They did the strategy. They did the advertisements, the marketing, all that stuff to be where they're at today. And all you had to do was just invest in your own parameters, your own platform, your own, you know, where you work and your work environment, right? Your, your game development environment. All you had to do is just spend the money to get your developers up to snuff with the tools and everything they need to make games on Nintendo and PlayStation. And because of that, bam, you're in the areas. You, 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 you got more than just your foot in. You literally threw yourself in the whole house. You're in the room completely, 100%. You're there. And you'll have more gamers than you ever had in the entire existence of Xbox. And all you gotta do is just invest in multi-platform development. And now you're everywhere. You're literally in every region in the world. And you still are expanding in phone gaming. So you could compete with Apple and Google on the phone market. You're still in PC gaming, whether you're leveraging Steam or you're trying to do your own store, you still got Game Pass everywhere. You are everywhere and you did it like that. Do you honestly believe Microsoft is gonna stop that train because of a few people. Only the most hardcore are gonna resist. Like Tim Dog, like the podcast double bar double bar double barrel gaming podcast that you've seen. But that number is so small versus the immense gain they're going to get. Oh well. You know, they're gonna crack a few eggs to make an omelet. And that's exactly what Microsoft is going to do. Now, some people are going to feel hurt. Some people are going to feel betrayed. But yet you already have Xbox gamers that are like, this doesn't really matter. Because in all honesty, what they really care about is Game Pass. And as long as Microsoft supports Game Pass on their console and they keep creating a console where Game Pass provides all the games they need, they keep the games they want on Game Pass and they try their best to get third party to put games they want on Game Pass, they are more than happy. Everything else, whatever. If it's on PlayStation, good. Enjoy. If it's on Nintendo, whatever. Enjoy. They're not really all about the whole identity or exclusive on a platform. Some don't care. Hell, the biggest argument they'll say is they hope the other you know, competitors may one day put their games on Xbox. But if not, it's all right. They got Game Pass. They're good. They're okay. And you're already seeing it start changing. And again, you're already seeing... Um, the change in direction with these studios. So with this, with these guys, and let me get this out of here. Things are going to change. Things are going to be different. It's not going to be the same. 
Let me see if I could get one more video out here. Yeah, this is one more video. Let me show you this. Let me show you guys this one. This one is more with first one. First one. Same video, but this is a different cut where he actually talks about, again, like I said, I told you in the podcast, he's trying to convince gamers. The first video I'll show you the contrast, how he totally changed. Let me show you the full scope, or at least the partial scope. Let's talk about what the actual rumors are and what their potential impact could be. So the first one, Hi-Fi Rush. If Hi-Fi Rush were to go to the Nintendo Switch, I actually think that's a good thing. I don't view that as a bad thing. I look at it as, here's a game that Shadow dropped a year ago, who was very critically acclaimed. We aren't really calling it a triple-A game. It's more of a double-A game, but it was, you know, from an Xbox standpoint, definitely one of their best games of 2023. Now, a year later, you're saying, hey, let's put it on another platform where we think another audience will appreciate it. And you put it on the Nintendo Switch. What they're going to price it at, what the sales would look like, obviously that is TBD because we have no idea. But as a person that is invested in the Xbox ecosystem, what's changed for you? Absolutely nothing. All Microsoft or Xbox is doing is, which they've done with Ori, which they've done with Cuphead, obviously Minecraft, we know this is about to happen with Call of Duty. They're just putting the game in more people's hands. What has their, from Phil Spencer on down, game is for everyone. You know, we want to reach as many people as we possibly can. This is a way for them to reach more people with one of their more popular games. And there it is. Again, pay attention to the signs. I'm telling you, pay attention to more bigger Xbox centric personalities. I'm talking the real big ones, the ones that actually are part of shows and stuff like that, you know, where they have the stage and Phil Spencer and Sarah Bond do guest appearances. S start listening to what they're saying. And if they're constantly telling you podcast after podcast, news after news, that this doesn't hurt Xbox. This doesn't hurt your experience with Xbox. That this is a good thing. They did the same thing with PC. They did the same exact thing. And then Microsoft officially announced their plans. And everything was accepted. The few that still hated it, nobody remembers them. And even some of the biggest um, names that for Xbox or whatever, they turned coat and they completely changed their mind. The writing's on the wall. Xbox fanboys, your days are numbered. With that, for the PlayStation community, listen, because their days are numbered, you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of nonsense coming from them. This is like they're gonna go kamikaze. Their plane has been shot, and instead of crashing and parachuting, and you know, so they can survive, they're not gonna be taken prisoner. They're going to come in and they're just going to double down on their stupidity. They're going to double down on their just make up stuff. No PlayStation 6. This game is not first party. Don't count. You, you're going to see some of the, you know, PS5 games on Xbox. You're going to see some of the most ridiculous comments and points and topics coming from them. And I'm going to tell you, if you get involved in those points, you're going to lose. And the reason why, because the topics are so stupid. They're so damn dumb there is no way to rationally argue the point in the end you're just gonna look dumb that's it you're just gonna look dumb so don't even it's done the writing's all it's over just move on let it happen we're gonna get the you know it's microsoft is gonna complete all this stuff on their own time it is what it is just let them go through their period of cope and whatever it's, it's just not that. If you get involved and you try to argue this, you can't argue stupidity. You're just going to look dumb. Okay? At this point, writing's on the wall. Xbox fanboy, they're about to be extinct. It's going to come down to Nintendo and PlayStation. And luckily, they each have such unique way of gaming. They easily can go coexist. Nintendo and PlayStation can easily coexist because they're doing their own thing in their own way they're not really interfering with one another one's not intruding into the other's territory right 
But anyway, Port Rock 77, let me know what you think of this video. Hit me up in the comment section. You guys have a great weekend. Peace. Grand opening, grand closing.